Welcome to Dead Rose Radio. You'd be surprised at what I'm making right now, okay? So I'm spinning papers, and I'm talking like newspapers, um, any kind of thing that I can recycle right now. Because I came up with an idea. I, I'm trying to do, like, do the prep work for it, and it's turning out a lot nicer than I expected. What am I going to call this? This has got to be like, this is like purple, blue, and orange, and it turned out looking like, kind of reminds me of fire some for some reason. So yeah, last night, last night was something. I had some drama in my chat. I woke up this morning and I thought about it. And I was like, you know what? I still don't change my mind. I still feel exactly the same as I did last night. So I'm not changing my mind. You people are starting to piss me off, you know? Either that or I'm totally losing my patience with people. I think maybe that's it. I'm just like totally losing my patience. I'm getting to the point where I, I don't give a shit. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, Andrew? Like, I'm starting to get to that point. Like, I'm like, okay. Really, Andrew? Yeah, that's where I'm getting to the point. I guess, yeah, you've talked about that. Where it's like, I'm getting to where, you know what? I, I, I'm getting, I'm not going to care at all. I think I care too much. And I think that's the problem with me. I cared a little bit too much for people who just don't give a shit about themselves. You know? They don't care to... I don't know. They just they don't see things the same way I do, and I I know I knew that. Like I know not everybody does. It's like I think I just wasted a lot of energy and a lot of my time, and you know part of it was like last night's show. I was like, "What the hell, man? Fucking losers! I'm sick of it. I'm like surrounded by losers." You can't tell me that people are in their thirties, forties, and fifties acting like a bunch of Nobody. It's like they don't have no vision. They have no accomplishment. They got nothing, but they sure have a mouth on them. They sure have a lot to say, but they have nothing to back it up. And I think I'm just like around the wrong people. The wrong type of people. I know that sounds kind of arrogant, but I'm not trying to sound arrogant. I'm just trying to, you know, I've got goals and dreams and stuff and like no one on the fucking internet seems to have any it's like Jesus are you guys kidding this is it this is your life I'm not going to spend the next five years with this shit I'm going to do what I was going to do a long time ago so for me to get there I got to roll these papers <laughs> it's the plan man it's the plan and I'm not feeling sorry for myself or anything like that. I'm just not feeling sorry for myself, but I guess disappointed in a way in myself because I feel like I just wasted a lot of time. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, I don't think I wasted time when I, you know, hang out and relax and just had good conversation and stuff like that. But I feel like I wasted my time on other things. Like, I just think that pe other people have other agendas. You know, their agenda is to um, tear you down and bring you down. Because their lives are so fucking shallow. They don't have anything going on for themselves. And so, that's all they do. Like, they have nothing else. They've got nothing, nothing good going on. Now, I'm not talking about people who have genuine lives and, you know, they have their things that they're into and things like that. I'm talking about uh, actually, I have no idea what I'm talking about, but I know these these things are turning out freaking awesome. Oh, shit. Oh, I just messed it up. Oh, man. I got too confident. Hold on. Well, I guess there's really nothing I can do. So what's going on tonight? Is Barco going to play music tonight? I'm 
must have stayed up really late because I woke up this morning and I was a mess. I felt like I was hit by a truck. Hey, Apocalypse. I was just venting about my disappointment in individuals. But see, that's my fault. I think that's my fault because sometimes my expectations are too high. And I don't mean like I expect people to be at a certain status. You know, nothing like that. But my expectations too high on, um, I guess, on humanity just in general. You know, like, um, damn, I suck. I need to, I need, you know what I need? I need one of those little twister things. But the tools, like all these tools that they have for crafting and stuff, they are ridiculous. The prices on it. So I do everything the old-fashioned way, you know. I just kind of wing it and try to figure it out without the tools. But I need, I need to break down and get tools. But they're just so expensive. If I had tools, I would have been done. I would have got, ooh, ooh, that one's beautiful. Okay, you got that one. Oh, man, as long as it doesn't stick to the carton. So you get that shit in real life, too. Yeah, I went to a friend's house. What? And all he did was make me think we'd rather watch TV. Yeah. Yeah, he, he could buy the tools for me, Apocalypse. Exactly. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not trying to be dramatic, okay? Or whine or have a drama moment. I mean, but I'm I'm serious, though, at the same time. Because last night's show, I really thought about it, and I was like, what the fuck? And, yeah, that would have been funny as a joke if I was five, you know? And I'm just like, what the hell, man? What is wrong with people? I'm telling you, people are fucked up. I don't even belong in this world. I don't think I belong in this world. I think... Oh, oh man. Look what I did. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, I got... Oh. I just messed everything up. My nails... I gotta cut my nails down. That's what's the problem. My nails got way, way too long. Alright. You know, I don't know why they didn't grow this long when I was younger, when it was in style. Now I have to keep cutting them because all they do is get in my way. But they grow so fast. and Probably because of all the vitamins I'm taking. Yo, you didn't miss anything. <laughs> you didn't miss nothing, Apocalypse. I'm even considering turning the, sh the show off because I don't even know why I'm having it right now. I just turned it on because I was like... I mean, I was trying to listen to shows and stuff, but nothing's uh, keeping me focused. Shave your head, broom. What? Are you bald? Are you, sh are you bald? Like, I um, mean, you shave your head down like a crew cut, or like, are you got no hair? Like, you know what I mean? Like, your hair's only like less than an inch. And we don't even know what you look, what you look like, Apocalypse. Oh, you just keep it shaved. Well, that's good. That's good. That's a good haircut. I was talking to my son about that today, you know, because uh, his hair's down to the middle of his back. And he, we haven't had time to get our haircuts. 
And I said, you know, <laughs> you need to cut your hair. You know, you need. He goes, yeah, but I, I haven't had time and all this stuff. And and I was telling him, you know, if you shave it, um, shaving your head is still, as far as like musicians go, it still has a, a dramatic, you know, like either you have long hair or you have shaved hair, and they're both. They're both equal in, um, you know, the whole rock and roll masculine look or whatever. And I was like, you can do that. <laughs> but he has beautiful hair. I mean, his he, must, he has my hair, obviously, I think. It's a little bit different because um, he's, he's uh, lighter, you know, he's want more white, but, um, he's got beautiful hair. We were talking about that, so I think he's, he's looking to start shaving his head. It's going to be so weird, because I haven't seen his, well, no, he had long hair as a baby, too. Um, we, we always have long hair. One of my son's his sh head is always shaved all the time because he's got that even though he's blonde his his he's got the real thick native mexican type hair that only grows straight up like it's so like if he wanted to even grow it out he would have to wear a beanie to make it lay down do you know do you guys know what i mean like he would have to train it so he always shaves his head it doesn't grow uh it's just really strong. I don't I don't know how to explain it, but it looks kind of funny because he's blonde. So it looks weird. So he actually puts uh when it does grow out a little bit, he just puts some gel in it. He just puts some gel in it and it makes it look like he purposely spiked it, but he didn't. It's just the way it is. Do you know what I mean? So when he puts the gel on it, it kind of makes it look more tamed or something like that. But it's funny, but it's it's been shaved a lot now. I mean, when he was younger, it was hard to control because, of course, he's a kid, and he doesn't want to take care of it, you know. So, uh, But, you know, now he's grown, and he has those things at home, and he just does it all himself. But the one with the long hair, it was like, oh, my God, we got to go find somebody that knows how to cut long hair because if you mess up on our hair, you could see every cut every every jagged edge you know so if somebody messes it up I get all postal <laughs> I'm just kidding what furry back yeah Apocalypse um I don't do that too much sun hits my ears and I'm off to get it cut. Yeah, it's really hard to see you, Andrew. I mean, I can kind of make what you look like. But not really. Okay, I totally messed up on this one. I don't know what the heck I did. Oh. I, feel like, I just feel like I just accomplished something. I'm telling you, this whole week I did... Oh, I mean... I was busy as far as errands and the things I needed to take care of, but like on my own personal stuff, I didn't do nothing. You know, I I just sat here fighting dizziness. Like today, it took me because we went I went to bed so late last night. I didn't wake up till about noon. And I was so dizzy, it was ridiculous. Ridiculous, and then I was like, "What do I do?" You know, I took an iron. I made. I tried to make like something healthy to eat and stuff, and like nothing was making it go away. So finally, about three hours ago, I made this big pot of veg, just vegetables. I had uh, cauliflower, broccoli, things like that, and I just ate that. Like I just ate a whole big old ass like Tupperware bowl full of it and now I feel better. And I was like, what the hell is going on?
I'm not going to live my life just on vegetables, damn it. I want, <laughs> I want some meat, though. So tomorrow, if it does, if I keep getting this, I'm, I have to make another appointment just so they could tell me, whatever. But it sucked. But I don't know if it's because I was so tired. I can't tell, like, why that happened. Damn, those are, those look nice. If you guys could see what I'm doing. You know what? I should have popped on the YouTube and you guys could, um, I could talk to you while I'm doing my stuff. And you guys could watch me. That's what I was doing for a while there. But only, only Todd was watching. <laughs> it's up on YouTube somewhere. You guys could go find my hangouts. It should be on there. I don't think I put it on private. But I have somewhere you watch what I'm doing and I just talk like I did on this show. Or something like that. I get up at 4 a.m. even drinking. Nightbender. Modified chicken salads? What is that? Mod modified chicken salads? You know what? I was telling my son, okay. I don't know if you guys know what this is called. It's called uh, chicharrones or something like that. They're like pork skins. But they're the way they make them here is different. It has like some meat on it and some pork kind of tastes like bacon in a way. Well, I noticed, I I tried one um, last month, and I've been having it almost every single day, right, since then, because I was like waking up, and that's the first thing I eat, and I was feeling good. Well, I ran out. I ran out about three days ago, and I haven't went to get any more, because I was like, my son was like, that's bad. That's like bacon, eating straight bacon. And I go, I don't know, something about it. I just felt so much better, you know, like the whole day. Like I wasn't dizzy or nauseous or anything. Like all I did was eat like two or three pieces and I was like good to go. And that's what I was having for breakfast. And, um, which is, I guess is the same concept as the bacon. You know, if I eat bacon, I feel really good. Or if I eat fish, you know, like I was talking last night about the salmon. And um, he said it's protein. So it's like something about the protein makes me feel better. So, but protein can be so high in calories, you know. That's the only thing. So what is protein, though? What organ is that? They have to watch for I start a night of drinking, I take, oh, a multivitamin, and usually slam two beers. Oh. Oh, wow. So what's going on tonight? Is anybody on? This is a bad, bad show. <laughs> Let me go see if anybody's awake. See, like right now, I'm feeling like I, sh I should, uh eat something. Oh, there's nobody on. Damn, it's only Monday, people. Monday. It's the beginning of the radio week. It's not supposed to be this dead until Friday. Alright, let's see. I know it's like Tuesdays and Thursdays are kind of busy. You take fish oil and water. I could out drink Barco. <laughs> I never. Yeah, like Fridays are always like really dead. I think it's just people are tired, you know, they're coming home from work or whatever, and they're just exhausted. I wonder. I know I'll stay for a little while. 
Then I might just watch a movie or something until I fall asleep. No one's coming. God, those are really cute. Damn. I'm sorry. I know I sound like I'm patting myself on the back. I do this a lot. I'll be like, God, I suck. And then out of the blue, I'll be like, oh my God, I'm so awesome. Let's see. It's part of the process. I wish I could hire someone to do this. I should. I should look for somebody to, you know, find a teenager who do this manual labor. <laughs> All the prep. <laughs> the, the prep, what I call prep work. You know, because you got to make all these little things and then put them all together in one big thing. So that's what I'm doing is the prep work. And I'm thinking, God, I don't want to do prep work. I just want to do the actual designing. From all this deep. The only thing with that, I thought of something similar to that because there's a lot of people here in this area that are always looking for work. Like, sometimes I can find somebody to help clean my house, um, things like that, you know. Or um, I even hired this one person who wants to do the laundry for me just because I just don't have the time. And um, th the only problem with this is if I showed somebody how to do this, they can easily steal it do it twice as fast as I am and then come up with their own products and then sell them out of the back of their cars. Do you know what I mean? Like, that would be my only fear. Like, they would totally steal the idea. So, um, I don't do that. Because people, you know, people don't realize how smart um, a lot of the uh, immigrants are Mexican immigrants here because they're they're natural entrepreneurs they will make money out of nothing right then a lot of people don't realize like they take it for granted that um, you know they're just sitting there not having a job I mean they'll create a job they'll figure something out so if I get some woman to teach her this she'll be like oh she'll go home and she'll be like oh just tell all her her sisters and nieces and they can sit there at the table and do this and they can whip them out faster than I could ever make them and then that'd be wrong you know then I'd be like upset so I have to find somebody who really doesn't want to do this <laughs> you know somebody who'll do it for the money but isn't artistic or creative you know like I know like there are some people I ran into before that were like oh I could do this I could, it, that's all you do to make money, like it's, you know, oh, that's all you do, and, um, they've tried it, but what holds them back is, uh, they don't want to do the work, you know, they don't want to do the actual work, they like the idea of waking up and having money in their bank, but, um, they don't want to actually sit here and make the stuff, so, those are ones I'm like, okay, here, you, you can help me and all. I'll pay you a little bit. Even like my own mom. You know, my mom can totally, we can help each other do this. But she's like, oh, then I added this and I'm going to do this. And, you know, we're just going to change it. And I'm just like, no, you don't change it. I make it this way and you make it the way I'm showing you. And she'll be like, oh, but it's easier. Just like uh, last night I was looking at, um, so, you know, on YouTube I was looking at how people are showing some of these things I make and sell. And I was seeing how they were doing it. And everybody glues things together, like on the costumes. And that's where I was different. I don't glue anything. I literally sew it on. I sew on everything. Everything is... Um, what do you call it? Everything is, uh, what do you call it? Secured. So they can put it in the washing machine. Like, you guys don't care, huh? Hello, Paul Dembski. Okay, my fingers are dirty now. 
Hold on. My, I should cut my nails. They're like totally in the way. Oh. <laughs> it stuck to my cheek. I was trying to wipe it off and it stuck to my cheek. Hold on. Oh man, I just totally messed. Okay, no one's going to care. I was gonna... Hopefully they don't notice. Oh, they're gluing together. Okay, hold on. Let me... Okay, so in the time I've sat here on the show, I made 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Hey, that's something. I don't understand much without visual. Come help me, Apocalypse. Do you need a job? You can come over. I'll show you. You said you have tools, right? I still don't understand the 1488. Like, I know what people mean by it. I just don't understand how they came up with that number. Probably has something to do with history. Do you sell these off the freeway exits? I heard that you can do that in California. <laughs> no, mine, mine are actually on an online store. <laughs> online stores, I guess. But no, that's what I was just telling Apocalypse about. Like, there's a lot of people who do that here, like at the grocery stores, and they make bank though. They'll just be like, you want blankets? And they'll go, you know, okay. And then you go to their trunk and they've got like mass, mass products in their trunk. <laughs> and all these people sneak shopping, you know. It's, especially on the holidays. The holidays get crazy around here. But people can do that. They, they need a license, right? If you have a license, then... Um, it, I guess it depends on the city. Like, Ventura County, no. Like, Ventura County, no, you can't do that. But out here where I'm at, they can do it if they have a resale license. And then, um, but if they don't have a resale license, then they'll get in trouble. But they don't really bust them out here. So people get away with it. Like, they don't, um, cops will pass by them all the time and they don't do anything. So I guess it just depends on where you where you're at in California. Like the big thing out here, uh, I don't think it's in other counties. You know those like um, what do they call it? Those taco trucks, those trucks that park outside of businesses and people go out on their lunch hour and they buy from these trucks. Well, these trucks actually just find a spot. A, a, like off a dirt road they park they put chairs tables and stuff out there and they'll stay there all day long like a restaurant and then the next day they'll be parked somewhere else and then they'll like have certain days but there's like three or four of them that I know of out here so like if you're hungry you just drive around town and find out where the truck is parked and it's really good food I mean it's really good homemade um, Mexican food. I always have trouble ordering because I don't I don't speak Spanish but that's what I'm telling you people don't realize like uh, many of the immigrants here they're they're entrepreneurs they'll make a business out of nothing I think it puts Americans to shame, you know. Maybe that's why people get so mad at them. But it does, because here you have all the benefits and all the, you know, you got your computers, you got money for the equipment, you got money for your, if you wanted to do anything you wanted to start, you got the money. You have some kind of money so you can buy your, um, you know, as seed money, so you could buy your first things to start with and nobody does it like nobody 
Nobody does it at all. But then those are the same people that don't have a damn job. And they're like, um, well, you know, and I, like, if I give advice about it, they're like, oh, yeah, that sounds great. But they don't really want to do it. They don't want to really have to work at it. See, you got to stay up, like, till 4 o'clock in the morning doing rolling papers. You know what? I should just end this show. Oh, yeah, roach coaches. Yeah, okay. Yeah, those things. So they actually use it as a restaurant here. Like, it's, it's still one of those roach coaches, but it's a little different. So you have, they have their own um, products and stuff. Did I just mess up? These are the most fucked up looking things I've seen. I, I really messed up. <laughs> they, these don't look good at all. I mean, I looked away for a minute and now I look at it again. I'm like, oh my God, I must be stoned. I need a better thing. I can't use this. This thing's stupid. I need something else. You know what I need? I need like... A saute stick. What should I do? Okay, let me try a pencil. Let me see if a pencil works. Because I think this is... Hold on. Oh, yeah, this is way better. Okay, what do I do, you guys? Oh, let's see, but that's too big, but that works way better. Okay, I gotta find, I gotta find a, alright, so I guess I'll find a song. No, I don't, I don't give links to my stores to, um, the trolls. <laughs> Just kidding. No, I gave my link out, I gave my link out on here, and then... Barco goes and tells people, oh, yeah, you can't buy from there because she'll dox you. I'm like, what the heck? People, people was <laughs> trying, that was so mean. I just remembered, I'm mad at him. Now I'm mad. No, I can send you a, I can send you a link. I won't send it in the chat, though. I can't send it in there. You just got to tell me. I'll get it. <laughs> You'll go get it. Yeah, I just don't put it in the chat room. I know you can't. I, it's probably on my Twitter somewhere. It's, it, there's a link to, to it on my Twitter. It's just like... Oh, man. Okay, well, you guys, I don't know. I'm going to see if... What? Yeah, but is that Paul Dem... Is that real Paul Demsky? That's the thing. It's like, I don't know who they are. I don't know if that's the real Paul. It's hard to tell nowadays. I mean, you're talking it's 2 o'clock in the morning, right? Um, it could be anybody. And I don't think I've ever, uh, well, actually, I don't know Paul. <laughs> I don't know Paul. So, I may know of him, but I don't know him. Let's see. You sure that's the real him? Oh. Well, hey, Paul, did you get rid of those people that are living with you? I mean, you don't have to tell me, but... Did you get rid of those people? That's what I remember about you. You um, were helping this couple. Hold on, let me find something. Oh, I found one. Oh, yes. 
Yes, I found one. Yeah, that's that's one. Cause I remember when I first met you, you were uh, doing that, and I was telling you you have to be careful because once you let people in, you can't get rid. Of, like, if they want to be jerks about it, and you try to tell them to leave, they don't have to leave. You will have to go to court to try to get them to leave. And you got to be careful because there was a time when I used to help um, people all the time, especially homeless people. And boy, did I learn my lesson because I'm not saying this is for you, but, you know, your, t your intentions may be good. But if somebody's got drug or alcohol problems and they say, oh, I'm just going to straighten out. I'm going to apply for my benefits. I have plans to do this, this. We're going to get on our feet. You know, and then you let them stay there and it'll seem okay in the beginning, but they'll go back to their ways and they have no intention. They will stay there until you literally kick them out. They have no intentions of leaving. I remember this one guy. He, I still remember, he came from Georgia. And, um, uh, whoops. My husband felt really bad for him. He's like, oh, you know, I want to let him stay. You know, he just needs to get on his feet, kind of crap. And I was like, oh, I really, I really don't want him to. I really, really don't want him to. But, um, he did, you know, and we tried to help him out. Three weeks went by, four weeks went by, a month went by, then I realized six months went by, and I was like, he has no intention of leaving. He's going to have to leave. And I said, you better, I was so furious, I was like, you better tell him to go. So, sure enough, he tells him, right? He tells him. The guy starts crying, begging, and we're just like, no, you got to go. You can't stay here. You can't stay here. You know, we're... We're a family. You know, we have our own family. You, we were here to just help you out. And, um, oh my God, this guy just threw a stink and it was the most difficult thing. And finally, finally, I snapped and I was like, dude, if you don't pack your shit. And I even gave him an address. He had a place to go and everything. I go, if you don't pack your shit and leave right now, I'm calling the cops. And so he got scared and left. But you know what? If the cops came... The cops would have made, told me that he would be able to stay. I know it. They would have, um... <laughs> You're probably like, why are you telling me all this? I don't I just kind of reminded me of it. Well, I guess what I'm trying to tell you is be careful when you help people. I mean, it may be going great and stuff, but, um, but if they haven't progressed, um, you got to... You got to be careful because they'll take everything you got. Something happens to you or you pass away or something, they'll take everything. I'm just saying, be careful. Just tell me to shut up. It's not my business. But I'm rolling. I'm spinning papers, so I'm kind of here, kind of not. <laughs> okay. All right. That looks pretty. Saying out to... Because my tenant. Hundred percent right. People can stay for a long time and cost you a lot of money. Yeah, exactly. They'll have no intentions to leave. So your heart, <laughs> your heart could be in the right place, and I totally understand. But I remember, like when I first met you, that they just moved in. And I was trying to warn you about it because I was like, "Oh my God, you're asking for it." It's very, very rare. Uh, it's very rare that anything like that works out. Very rare. Especially if they were homeless for a while in the first place. Like, it'd be different. Let's say... Let's say Apocalypse, okay? Apocalypse. Apocalypse, okay? He's had a job. He had a home. And he had all this stuff. He falls into hard times, and he ends up kind of homeless, and he's like, oh, shit. He has to go to his friends, and he's trying to look around. And then someone takes him in, and then he's capable. He's capable of of uh, appreciating the help and getting, on, getting off his feet and getting his butt in gear because 
he doesn't already have that um, lifestyle. And he doesn't have the addictions and he doesn't have all that stuff. Because anybody that's addicted to drugs and stuff, the biggest thing that I had to learn is they lie. They all lie. There is no way in hell that there is one person addicted to drugs or stuff like that that's not going to lie to your face. They, they will lie for it. They'll do whatever it takes to, um, you know, make sure they, uh, what do you call it, have what they need for it. And so it's the same way when you take in um, some of these people. But then pretty soon, like first they're like, oh, they're appreciative. And then suddenly they're not. Suddenly they expect it from you. Well, we don't have no food. They just look at you. You're like, well, I, I fed you last week or I gave you some money for food. Yeah, but we don't have no food now. It's like, okay, then you better call the food banks. You know, call the food banks then. Oh, we don't have a way to get there. Well, you better go take a damn bus. You know, that's all I see is like there, I don't, there's always, <laughs> I'm ranting, I'm sorry, I'm just ranting now. There's always an excuse. Um, well, I have a doctor's appointment. Well, take the bus. Well, I can't take the bus because my back hurts and I need, oh, and I can't. And it's like, well, that is not your problem. You know what I mean? That you got to get firm like that. Just And you always have to tell them, you got such and such amount of time. I'm giving you three weeks. Anything after three months, I think it is, or not even that. Two or three months, if they're smart. They, it, it, it could be impossible for you to have them leave. You are telling these people's stories. <laughs> what do you mean? Like just telling a story? Yeah, I mean, so your heart's in the right I understand. Your heart's totally in the right place. The reason I know is my husband was kind of like this, okay? He would take in people because of... Uh, he was kind of a missionary, you know, and and we would take people in all the time. And it lasted about two years when we finally got a clue, you know. Yeah, you want to help people and you want to do the Christian thing and stuff. But then, you know, what it came down to is being a Christian it does not mean being called to ignorance. In other words, you, you don't sit there and allow someone to take advantage of you and your family. You know, you got to be smart and... um you can help them by, like, if they say, oh, well, we need some money for food. Do you have any money for food? I would go just get them food. Oh, no, but we, we needed some money. So, see, they didn't need money for food. What did they need the money for? Do you know what I mean? Or, like, when you see those people outside saying, um, do you have money for gas? Ask them. Just say, um, is your car here? Do you have your car at the pump? I can, I can pay for, you know, at, since you're at the cashier you, you can put in like 10 bucks for their gas and watch them they'll be like um oh no no i'm not here right now see so you gotta be careful i guess what i'm trying to say is a lot of these people they may not plan to be this way you know of course they don't want to plan but they become professional hustlers and after you help them they'll find somebody else that helps them too and they will hustle it sucks, but you'll have the few, you'll know, you'll know the ones that are legit. You'll, you'll know it because they already have some kind of a stability before that. Like they already had experience with, you know, like a student. Let's say it's, there's a full-time student, they fall on hard times and they're just like, hey man, can I just sleep on your couch? You know, I have, they'll, they'll spend their day trying to get on their feet. They'll spend their day doing for themselves, you know. There's like a characteristic. What about a standard like you have to the end of the week to get a job? Yeah, exactly. You give them back hurts. I've heard that. Oh, the back hurts. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Paul. I'll delete this show. I'm just going on a rant, part from my own experience, but also because it, you, you, you just reminded me of that. No, you got to give them timelines. Yeah, you got to give them timelines. Like, okay, yeah, I'm giving you two weeks, three weeks. By this week, you are to accomplish this, this, this. 
if they start giving you excuses and kind of blowing you off, you know, like, oh, well, I just didn't have time. They blow you off. That May 1st is moving day. Wasn't going to throw them out in the zero temps. Yeah. Well, the two people I finally, you know, had leave, I actually called shelters and stuff. And I'm like, okay, you have a place to go. I'm dropping you off here. You know, like I, I went to that extra step, but from there on, it's their responsibility. Like the one guy was crying and throwing this fit. And he goes, oh, but poor me, poor me. And I don't know, I was like, look, dude, you know, at the time the guy was like 45. You're a 45 year old man, okay? I'm only like 25 years old with a child. And, uh, you know, we have a f little family going on. And it's like, dude, you do not belong here. Go. We helped you. you. It's time for you to go. You're not living here. You're not. It's not happening. You know, it's like, you go. I was getting pissed off. I was like, you mooching off us and shit. It, he just totally took advantage. And that's what it is. It's a professional hustle. And it's part of the lifestyle. It's like nothing you did wrong. And it's not that, um, you know, your heart's not in the right place. It's it's that way of life. I guess that's how you have to look at it. It's that way of life. And especially when drugs and alcohol are, are involved, it's a whole nother story. Because you just got to remember that everything out of their mouth is a lie. Everything is a hustle. And yeah, it's legit. You know, some of it's legit. Yeah, they may need help with this, this, and this. But if they can't do it with a roof over their head, they have access to a telephone, they have a roof over their head, they have a toilet, they're able to take a shower. If they cannot accomplish waking up, taking a shower, getting dressed, brushing their teeth, walk to the bus stop, go to a job interview, or go to a doctor's appointment, and they still can't do it with a roof over their head, then it doesn't matter if they're homeless or not. They are not planning to do anything for themselves. They want you to support them. They want a handout, you know? So, it sucks. It really does. Like, it really sucks. And if they haven't applied for their benefits and haven't done the waiting game, you know, waiting for their food stamps or all that stuff, because that's part of it too, they need an address. So if they don't take advantage of having that address in that time that they're there, they have no intentions of leaving. Do I sound like a bitch? Pocalyse, do I sound like a bitch? <laughs> I don't mean to. I'm just like, I'm just telling people like it is, okay? Don't waste, don't waste your, your life and your family life, your marriage on stuff like this. Don't, don't be hustled. See, I know street life. I mean, I don't know street life, but I know some things. I've been around. I mean, I haven't been around, but I've seen life on that side, you know? Yeah. Yeah, see, I, see, I think your wife is just a good at heart, a Christian. She probably genuinely wants to help. But there are people you can genuinely help, you know? Um, there are homeless people you can gen... You'll know. You'll know when you see them. You got to stay away from the ones with the drug problems. I'm telling you, the drug problem ones, it, there is no help. They're not going to change. If they really wanted to, let's say if I was on the streets and I I I got addicted to things, you know. It just the fact that they have a drug problem while they're homeless tells you a lot. Because how are they getting the money for their drugs? If they can get the money for their vices, but they can't get it to put a damn roof over their head, or they can't get a hotel, they can't go, they can't think of a way to go take a shower and get dressed, or even take advantage, you know what I mean? And let's say you offer them a home, they have access to a computer, so they have all day long. They could be on the computer, look around the area, try to hook themselves up with food, hook themselves up with a doctor, hook themselves up with, um, you know, whatever benefits they need to apply for, um, go to school, I don't know, whatever they have to do, and they still haven't done it, then it's a lost cause. It's, it's a lost cause. It's like, there's nothing 
there's nothing. Oh, yeah, where was I going with this? Oh, if I was homeless. Yeah, so if someone gave me a roof over my head, let's say I've been homeless for two weeks, three weeks or something, and I'm, like, so desperate. I'm like, God, I just need, if I just had the transportation or I just had a phone or I just had a computer, you know, and someone gave me the opportunity and they said, okay, Rose, you could stay with us for four weeks. Actually, okay, I did do this, but I guess I didn't see it this way. I stayed at my brother's. Uh, yeah, that's right. I stayed at my brother's for two. He gave me four weeks. He gave me four weeks I could stay there. And, of course, he let me stay longer because he's, he's my brother. But he's got a family. You know, he's got a wife. He's got kids. And I was like, and I have my kids. So I was like, oh, God. And if I stay any longer, we would kill each other. So he let me move all my furniture and everything into his garage. He gave me four weeks. You know what I did in that four weeks? In that four weeks, I busted my ass and posted on the Internet. In, you know, all these products that I made. I just posted them. Um, I, of course, I used the computer. I started, like, looking around for apartments and stuff like that. I did all this stuff. I was out of there in two and a half weeks. So in two and a half weeks, I was out. I already had my place. I had my money. I had everything. But I actually worked it because that's how bad I wanted to just be on my own or just make it. So if you don't see that same drive in the people that you're helping, you know, you know, and I, I don't know if you ever heard my shows. I have a lot of health problems, and I still did it. You know, I still, I still did what I could. Well, yeah, you know, like, like with him, he got me so upset. Um, I don't know the, that man really well, but do you remember when he was asking for money for college, like out of the blue? And he was like, I need $4,000 for college. Do you remember that? And the first thing I thought in my head is, okay, first of all, he's obviously disabled. Being a disabled person, he can get his college completely paid for by grants, okay? So just even going to uh, um, a junior college, that probably costs, what, $30 a unit or something like that? But he would get the bog. He would end up getting, like, where they pay the tuition, pay for his books because he's on disability. And I was like, that guy... Bless his heart, I don't know him really well. I know he's got issues, but he was scamming. He was totally scamming because there is no reason, no reason for any American, no American here in the United States to be begging for money to go to college. There is not one. It will totally pay for it. The only time it won't is if you maxed it out, if you've already achieved your degree. And, you know, now they have the limits. So you max out at six or eight years. But by then, you should be, you should have your certificate. You should have already had your perks and, you know, your connections to have work. So that was the one thing that, huh? Oh, yeah, he, exactly. He had total options. Total options. Like, like my brother that I was talking about that took me in. Uh, before this. Um, he had diabetes. Um, yeah, he had severe, you know, we had childhood diabetes, but his diabetes got so bad, he, um, became blind and he lost his eyesight. And this is right before his transplants. Like, so he was still very sick. He ended up completely blind and he didn't know what to do. You know, he's like, oh, he's still trying. Like he's still trying. He wants, he's trying to hear like TVs and stuff. So finally, I drove him over to the Braille Institute in Santa Barbara because I knew about the Braille Institute, but he never, like the doctors didn't tell him anything. So we went over there. They gave him the cane. They gave him, um, uh, they'll send you books every week. You know, you get a recorder. Uh, they were teaching him different things. And all of a sudden he was like, what? And then they hooked him up at the junior college. They said, oh, no, you can go to college. He was like, what? So he went to the junior college. They hooked him up with the Braille thing. Um, to make a long story short, by the time he got his certificate, you know, he got his certificate for, uh, electronics or technology or something, 
uh, by the time he got it, his uh, he had eyesight return into one eye. Uh, but he got his certificate and everything, and I swear to God, and then, and then he ended up getting a transplant. He got a a pancreas and a kidney transplant. So after the healing process and everything, he's got a job right now making twenty eight dollars an hour for IT tech, right? Blind in one eye, having major health problems, and with the certificate that he earned while he was blind. So that's what I'm saying. Like, there is no reason, no reason why um, somebody with a disability cannot go to college. I'm sorry, I just went on this big rant. But yeah, there's no, there's no reason why in, in the United States. Just me going to the university, half that class are immigrants, immigrant children. Not They're not kids, they're, you know, in their 20s and 30s, but they are children of immigrants. A few of them came straight from Mexico. Like, they weren't even born in this country, and they were at the college. So, it's like, uh, there's absolutely no reason. There's no reason that no American could educate themselves and get out of it. That's how I see it. I'm sorry, I just went on this rant. I'm not trying to uh, um, disrespect anybody who has trouble, you know, and all this stuff. You know, just like me, I keep talking about, like, my situation. I'm struggling with finishing off this certificate. Only because um, I am, I don't know, I think it's a little different because I'm trying to be realistic you know, with my health problems, to be responsible for a classroom full of 40 kids and for me to have something happen in front of those kids, you know, that's a whole, I think that's a little bit different. Like, I'm thinking to step back from that. But if I step back from that, I'm going to find something else. You know, do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to just say, oh, I can't do that, so I just give up. I will, I will, um, like what I'm doing right now, I'm expanding on the stuff I sell. So now it's like I added things because I'm already planning, okay, I'm going to have to switch it and think of something quick. And so that's what I'm doing. What? That per is a smooth scammer. Of course, he could get full right for the... Nothing ever goes right. Well, exactly. Exactly. There's no reason. There is not... Like... The only time that somebody would have a problem, like the thing with homeless, okay, the homeless situation, like for most people, the problem with that, getting out of it for a lot of people, is it's usually the rent. It's usually the cost of living, right? Let's say a family that's homeless because they couldn't keep up with rent and the utilities. But they have money coming in somehow. It's, it's, so it's really difficult to just have absolutely no money and you have a family. There's there's always uh, welfare and stuff. You, there's always some type of money. And there's always churches around too. Like people don't realize that they could just pick up a phone and call it a church down the street. They may not have anything, but they'll know somebody who does. And they'll know so, somebody else who does. You know, So you can actually uh, create your support system. And you just say, hey, you know, um, uh, and, and they're really smart about, I think that's the difference too with churches. They're really smart about it. There's usually one or two people there that kind of know how the whole thing works with the hustling and all that. And they will question them in a way to just see if they're legit, you know, if they will um, just need a help, you know, just need the hand up kind of help. And they can usually tell. I mean, you could be wretched and you can be extremely poor and they'll still help you. But usually if you have the addictions and stuff, they have these halfway houses. And those halfway houses are the same opportunity. But the only thing is they have to give up their drugs. They have to give up their vices. Usually they don't want to do that. So there again. Do you know what I'm saying? So there is help. Like there really is no reason... To not get the help. And if the only thing that's holding them back is their vices, which they can't afford anyways, but somehow they're able to 
uh, pay for their their addictions, but they can't pay or save up to put some clothes on or put a roof over their head, then there's something fishy. Do you know what I mean? Uh, should I just should I just go? Yeah, yeah, Pogles. That's what I'm saying. Like there's like this that one lady uh, that I was complaining about. And what's her name like? Like real nasty comments with her bots all over my pages over it, right? Because this one, I was coming out of the grocery store. I don't know if you remember this show, Pocalees, but um, I was coming out of the grocery store, and we just bought like we. It's been a while, but we finally had like I don't know, like two hundred dollars in groceries, which is really not a whole lot when you're talking about two full-grown men and me, right? And with me having to need protein and meats and stuff, okay? So, um, we were just coming to the car, and it was 11.30 at night. I remember it was almost midnight, because the stores here are open 24 hours a day. And it was pitch dark where I was parked. I don't even know why I parked there, but it was pitch dark. And out of the blue, this lady comes, and we're, the trunk is open, and we're putting the bags in, and somehow she's right between us, looking in my trunk. And she's like, um, do you have any food that you can give us? She goes, I have like five kids, and we're just really hungry, and blah, 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 blah. And I was getting pissed, because she wouldn't walk, she wouldn't step away, right? She was doing the whole hustle thing. And I'm so mad, because I bought me some Lucky Charm. Okay, I never eat cereal, but for some reason, I wanted this Lucky Charm so bad. And there it was, right on top. And I was like, <sighs> and I, I put into consideration, she was talking about her kids. So I I grabbed the cereal and um, a bag of oranges. You know, I just got, which is kind of efficient for kids because, you know, cereals, they have the little vitamins in it. And then the oranges would be the juice, the vitamin C. So I thought, okay, you know, and I thought about it. I was like, all right, this this is good. So I gave her the bag of oranges, and I gave her my Lucky Charms, which I wanted for myself, but okay, I was going to help her, and I wanted her to step away from my car. This was last year, okay? She goes, what's this? I go, it's a box of cereal. She goes, what am I supposed to do with this? I go, you said you had five kids, right? She goes, yeah, they're really hungry. I go, well, they'll like the cereal. And you have the oranges. That's kind of like juice. And then she looks. She goes, but don't you have any meat and oil so that I can, like, fry something up? And I was sitting there thinking, okay, first off, she's telling me she was completely homeless, which means she doesn't have a fucking kitchen. Okay? She does not have a kitchen. And then it's midnight, which doesn't make any sense because if you had five kids and you were homeless, Right? Huh? <laughs> hey, Paul, that's nice. Yeah, so if you're, you have five kids and you are homeless, this is how it works. Your kids are in school during the day. During the day, you walk from church to wherever you need to get done while the kids are in school to collect the food and stuff for the day. Okay, that's what I would do as a mother. That would be my first job is like collecting the food for the, the evening And, you know, getting whatever I can done while they're at school. And then, if it's midnight, you are wherever you're hiding at with your kids. So, see, she lied. She lied. She totally tried to hustle me. So, who knows how many cars she went to that night trying to get meat and stuff like that. And, you know, meat's not cheap. At least here, it's not cheap. Um... Like beef right now, it's almost $5 a pound. You know, just getting ground beef. Ground beef, you're talking 10, 12 bucks, you know. So it's like if she's gathering from each car that she can do in the middle of the night like that, who knows? She could be going home with tons and tons of meat just going to her house. And that too, the area was filled with houses. So how is she homeless in a house, right? 
So I hope you guys didn't mind my rant. You know, these are things I like to talk about. I know it sounds dumb, but I honestly like to talk about this stuff because I am not, I'm not saying, I don't have a lot of money. You know, I don't have, you know, I struggle here and there. And some days I don't. But I've had to think of ways, um, as, you know, especially as a single parent. You know, and I, I kind of lucked out in a way because, um, I have survivor benefits, you know, but because I was a young wife or, um, you know, I'm not a, what do you call it? Um, like I wasn't married for 30 or 40 years or anything like that, you know, uh, kind of like a young, not, not too long. Um, my survivor benefits aren't like forever, you know, my survivor benefits were only for so, so much time. And so I planned it, that into everything I did, you know, I was like, okay, um, I have to be like the breadwinner now and I'm going to have to really, I had to change over from being a housewife to, um, someone who brings in the money, you know, and, you know, which is, you could tell by my personality, it's a little bit difficult, you know, I don't have the way of the world, I don't, um, pretty old-fashioned, you know, I just was just a wife and raising kids, so the first thing I thought of was, okay, I could babysit, I know kids, I could babysit, so I actually started taking in, um, you know, babysitting kids at my house, but you can only babysit up to six kids kind of thing, so I started off like that, like, okay, I guess I'll just you know, babysit when people go to work or whatever on top of my own kids. And I try to do that. And, um, of course I had my arts and crafts, but I never made money off it. It was more of a hobby. And then that's how it started. And I just started having to think of ways and think of ways. And then when things got rough, then I had to think again. I just opened up the phone book and I would just go through the phone book like, okay, where do I go? Where do I go? saw churches. I just went down the list. I called each one. Ding, 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 ding. Just knocked them out, right? From that one time, from that list, I had one church paid my rent for three months. Another church paid my utilities for like six months. Another church actually helped me get a car. Uh, another church helped me get furniture for my apartment. And see, so it was like I went through, like, the steps, right? And it took a while, but it was like, for each step I made, I made a um, support system. And actually ended up staying at one church permanent, like, for quite a while that I went to. And um, so I started doing it like that. By the time I was on my feet, I paid back the utilities and the rent places that pay the utilities and the rent. They said they didn't want it, but, uh, you know, I just gave it as like a donation. I just, here is, they were like, oh, you don't have to do that, but I did it. And, um, so see, that's what I'm saying, that there are ways, especially if you live in America. And let's say, let's say you live in a rural, like me, or, you know, you live in an area, there's nothing then you better find a way to get yourself out of that town and go to a town where there's more things. You know, you have to, if you have to do it. You know, if you have a friend that lives like in I don't know, let's say somewhere. I someone let's say you have a friend that lives in New Mexico and you know this person all your life and you're like, oh, but you're serious about doing this. Then you call them and say, Hey, you know, um, you do the research first for that area. You see what they have available, the, all the things that you can set yourself up. And then you ask this person, is it possible that I can come stay with you for two or three months while I get all this stuff and get on my feet? And usually people will say yes. You know, people don't mind helping out. As long as you don't have drug problems, alcoholic problems, and a bunch of excuses, you know, so as long as you show that you are trying, and they know you as somebody that's doing your best, then people will help you, and there's always help all over the place, I mean, even, even here on the internet, like the GoFundMe, I checked out those sites, and you know what, um, 
it's work. It's still work. You still got to write out your thing. You got to be creative and you got to be genuine. Like they can tell when you're trying to hustle and they can tell like when you're genuine. I've seen, you know, you just got to think. So, all right. I think I'm done with my rant on whatever. It's so un-American. <laughs> really? He seems like a old-fashioned American. Wait. Yeah. Not all, but some people complain. Exactly. Well, yeah, the meat, the meat part's hard. The meat, because the meat is so expensive. It's really hard for um, many food banks to get meat. That's why they give you, um, you know, beans or tuna or something high in protein to, uh, but you know what I think these places should do? Just for people who don't know how to cook or they don't cook much or they really don't have anything like, like if I got a, well now I could cook it, okay? But let's say back in the day, if I gave, someone gave me a whole bag of beans, I don't know what to do with them. You know what I do with them? I start painting them and I'll make a collage, <laughs> I wouldn't know what to do with it, you know. So there should actually be, it, technically, not like a cooking school, but um, I think they should do this with uh, girls or people that are on food stamps too. That they actually make them go to these classes to learn how to prepare the meals, to learn how to spend the money, you know, um, to learn how to make it last, you know what I mean? It, at least give them kind of a rundown. Now, whether they do it or not, that could be a whole different thing. But just before they hand it to them, because nothing, nothing makes me upset. And I'm not anti-food stamp, okay? Because I know there are a lot of people on food. I mean, they all. I mean, people working, people working two jobs, you know, who have to get it. But I do get upset, like, when I see, especially young people, young couples, you know, they're young parents, and they're getting these benefits that are very, very helpful. They get these benefits, and within a week, they're all gone. Everything is gone. And they're already complaining and begging. You know, I have no food. I have no money. And it sucks. I mean, it does suck. Okay, you don't have... Okay, let's say for a family of two here in California, you're talking maybe um, $190. Okay, $190 for one, one adult with a child kind of thing for a month, which when you real, realistically looks looks like nothing, especially when you're used to buying kind of whatever you want, you know, but you got to think. So you got to think, okay, you got to break down your meals for the month. You got to figure it out. It's so it's possible. It's it's poss I mean it sucks, but it's possible to sustain yourself. You know, and but people don't want to learn that like, okay, you buy a big bag of flour, a big bag of okay, this is what I would do. I'd buy a big bag of rice, a big bag of flour, a big bag of sugar, big old chunk of thing of of butter, okay? Now this is like if I'm like have to go a whole month just on so I make sure I have these basics, right? A bag of pasta of some type. And you better learn how to make biscuits, you better learn how to make bread, you better learn how to make tortillas, you better learn how to make all these things to sustain you, to keep you from you know, it's a harder, but it's doable. It's so it's like I just wish they would um, offer something to educate people on this. Like you would give them a cookbook, you would give them basic ingredients with the basic vitamin things. Do you know what I'm saying? And just like teach these people how to start doing this, kind of like when they used to teach people to farm. You know, how to farm for themselves. I guess it's the same concept for modern day society. How to take only this portion, 
let's say, I'm sorry, I'm totally going on a rant. You guys don't have to listen to me if you don't want me to want to. Okay, let's say $190. That's only $47 a week, right? So you're talking $6 a day. Okay, that's it. That's all you got. Six dollars. That sucks ass. All right. So, forty-seven dollars a week. So you got to think. All right. If you bought, you bought flour. You bought a big bag of sugar. You bought. Okay, rice is getting expensive, but you could get cheap ass rice too. You get buy a bag of rice. You buy butter. Well, you wouldn't need this every week. I'm just saying this is just to start. Okay. So you got the main staple things. Okay, you got a big old bag of pasta. That's and you can always go to a ninety nine cent store too. So you gotta like just think it out. And then they gotta think meats. Okay. Whatever qualifies as meat, peanut butter, peanut butter, you know, this, 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 and they just got to plan it all out. If you got bread, if the bread, if you could find um, Weber or they have these bread places where the bread's only like 50 cents a pop, you know, you gather as much as you can, you stick it all in the freezer. You get your big old thing of peanut butter. Those kids can have a peanut butter sandwich every fucking night. If they have to, you know what I mean? You gotta, you can make your biscuits, you can make your pancakes. I mean, they're very starchy foods, which is why a lot of people in poverty are overweight, you know, because of the the food they have to stretch. But, um, there, there are ways. So, I should, I should have a class on, should I have a class on this, you guys? Like, I should totally have a class on this. I think I, they they probably hate me, though. They'll probably slash my tires. <laughs> They'll be like, who's this bitch? She, she expects us to live off that. It's like, no, I don't expect anybody to live off that, but I know there's people that are. So I know that um, there, there are people that are struggling like that. Like all over the country, you know. This isn't just one place, or this is not um, immigrants or minorities. This is like all over the place. So, huh? Six bucks can get you a long way, but exactly, RD. Yeah. Okay. So, well, see, RD, you understand because you're Dutch. <laughs> we do things Dutch way. Okay, this is Dutch way stuff. Um, but l- you'd be surprised here in America. People just buy for the day. They buy for only a couple of days, so they don't always plan out the whole month. You know, they don't plan. They don't take a portion and um, plan a whole month of meals, right? They don't do that out here in, in the States. It's very rare unless you go into more rural areas. But um, should I apocalypse? I thought about it before because this is one of my things. Besides art, I don't know. This is one of those things I will talk about for hours and hours and hours. Like making money from nothing, how to survive. And I don't know why I, I know. I mean, I've been through some stuff, but never, I've never been like homeless on the streets to where I had to sleep in a bench or anything. I've never been, um, um, in a relationship where I was beaten black and blue, you know, I mean, like anything like that or, um, what do you call it, had drug problem or alcoholic problem, even though I should have for the stuff I experienced, but I've never had any of that stuff, but I've come really close, and like, probably like, because of the way I think, and I'm always trying to organize, I think I've really kept us above water, you know, because I was able to come up with things from nothing, and I think that's where my whole art thing comes in, because I was able to Um, critically think and problem solve. But I see a lot of people can't do that. And I try every, every person that I've met that I've tried to help, like not help, but give them advice. 
They'll take the advice, but they won't do it. And it's like, why? I don't understand. Like, why are you not doing this? Because six months from now, you're still going to be in the same spot. So either from six months from now, you're ahead. You've made some connections. You've met some people at church. Oh, I don't want to go to church. I don't believe in God. Okay, well, then I don't know what to tell you. You don't have to believe in God, but these churches are there to help you. Okay, there's no... Go to any one of them. There'll be somebody there who will give you the shoes off their feet. They will give you the, the clothes off their back. They'll, they'll give you blankets. They'll give you whatever you need. The only thing is that you've got to be um, humble in your heart. You've got to go in there and, and be honest. But if you go in there trying to hustle, they're going to spot it. They'll probably still help you. But, you know, you, you can only get uh, help for so long. Right? What? Oh, yeah. Peanut butter and jelly. People people don't realize peanut butter. Peanut butter will uh, sustain you. I know it sucks, but if you... It, just like that, the peanut butter. Okay? What have I learned? I know how to make the saute peanut butter sauce. There are... You don't... There's other ways to use peanut butter rather than just for sandwiches. You know, you could get real creative because it's actually a meat in very in a lot of cultures. America is the only place that puts peanut butter and jelly to, together. Other countries usually use it as a meat. So you would use it on top of vegetables. You would use it on top of, um, you know, bacon. Like, it's there's ways to do it, but you would have to really dive into it kind of thing and then the jelly yeah so you got for the peanut butter and jelly sandwich you got your protein iron you got your vitamin C you have your fruit and yeah that's pretty much will sustain you for a while and if you don't have bread use tortillas oh my god peanut butter and jelly in tortillas is awesome okay but you gotta heat your tortilla and let it get all burnt kind of thing like, you know where it got, kind of gets burnt? And you put butter, you melt the butter on there, and then you put a big old slob of peanut butter and jelly, and you roll that sucker up like a burrito. Kids love it. They, you know, because it's like, if you want to get real fancy, you could put a banana in it. So there they get the potassium, you know, so they get the potassium, and it, yeah, that's awesome. Thank you, Apocles. Are you going to help me with my book? <laughs> We'll be rich, you know. Yeah, the, the cream corn. I know this. There's a lot of, just like that, the cream corn. I hate cream corn. I hate it. But I know that you can make, um, like, biscuits out of it. Like, they can actually make these, um, that's what I mean, like, the education. If they knew how to use the flour the salt, sugar, stuff like that. They can make something with that cream corn, but you just got to think, you know. You just got to learn. Oh, I had shepherd pie before, Paul. Oh, my God, I love that stuff. I only had homemade shepherd pie, like, from somebody's house, like, twice. But they sell it at the Renaissance fairs. <laughs> Yeah, see, I never think of shepherd's pie because I don't normally make it. But, yeah, that's something totally perfect to make. Yeah, it's like a poor, yeah, it's like, like, it's a shepherd's, like, a poor man's pie, you know, apocalypse. But it's so good because you can, you can make it any way you want, kind of. You know, if you have canned green beans, canned corn, um... If you're lucky and you someone gave you some ground beef or you were able to get a hold of some ground beef, um, a box of, what do they call those, potatoes, mashed potato stuff, and you just make it. So there's like a lot of recipes that people could do. What? Popping your own corn is cheap as... Yeah, popping corn. Yeah, popcorn. That's snacks. I mean, popping... Popcorn, if you don't buy them prepackaged from 
Orville and, you know, you just buy a big old, let's say, I mean, they're still kind of cheap, though, if you get the bulk boxes, but if you don't, if you can't afford that, you can only buy a big bag of kernels, uh, you pop it the old-fashioned way, and those kids could munch on that for a while, and they'll be quiet, they won't be asking for chips, <laughs> they won't be asking for stuff. Oh, yeah, you could be totally creative with shepherd's pie. Like, you could come up with all kinds of stuff. And, you know, just like shepherd's pie, uh, you know, quiche, you could do the same thing. It won't be like fancy quiche, but you put the same ingredients like you would in shepherd's pie minus your mashed potatoes. Instead, have um, diced potatoes, right, that are already kind of cooked. And you just get a whole wad of scrambled eggs with some seasoning and then you pour it over and bake it. So you got a quiche. So you could kind of, um, you know, mix it up. Dang, now that you brought that up, I want, I want that. I want to eat some. <laughs> I want to eat some of that. I got to blow my nose though. Um. All right, I'll, I'll be right back. Hold on. I just, I, I, if you hear me blow it, don't say anything, okay? Let me just, I gotta blow my nose. I'm sorry I just rambled on and on. I hope you guys don't mind. I just got on it, went off on a tangent on my topic. <laughs> I just, I hope I didn't come across as being arrogant or mean about it. I just, I guess I just see it a certain way, like... Um, you know, like I'm not trying to be harsh with people, but I, at the same time, I want, you know, especially people who are going through this to see the reality, like they have to be realistic because there's not, not everybody's going to help, you know, people will help here and there, but eventually you got to carry the bulk of the responsibility. There's like nobody else going to do it for you. Right. And that's. If you're lucky, you have family right now, but eventually, you know, things happen in life. You may not always have the individual with you. Yeah. Well, thanks, Paul. I hope you're not upset that, you know, I started off with your guest. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to. Yeah. Okay, you take care. And... Car audio? What do you, is that a car audio? Hey, Barco. Barco, how come you always show up like when I'm ending my show? <laughs> Let me see. Well, is Realistic a uh, brand name? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, so good morning, Barco. From Radio Shack. Didn't they close the Radio Shacks? My brother was such a huge... Ra I mean, probably still to this day if they haven't totally closed. When they used to have those kits. Oh my gosh, those electronic kits. That's all he would play with when he were little. But, I mean, look at him now. Now he's into electronics and whatever technology, whatever he does. Um, and he makes good money off something that he used to play with. And now, and I was thinking that too, like, um, I still believe that whatever you played with when you were young or intrigued you is what you were meant to do. Mine, like I spent endless hours just make drawing figures with clothes on it and trying to make up stuff. Like makeup, fashion, and stuff like that, but all through high school, I never thought of it. I mean, I still did it, but I never thought of it as a job. It was always something that's supposed to be a hobby. And now I'm not a fashion designer or anything, but I make my living off first drawing the stuff out, making something up, and then trying to create it, and I sell it. You know, and it's like. Now I technically do exactly what I did when I was little. And now my brother, same thing. 
he played with electronics and wires and making stuff. I, I don't know. It was, oh my God, it was so embarrassing. But um, he did all this stuff and then he ended up um, doing things like cooking and being a chef and things like that. And then in the end, he ended up in the exact field that he started, you know, that he started off with when he played. 